Hey guys, welcome. Um, here's a second uh, moderately challenging use substitution problem and it's complicated this time by the fact that it's got limits. But I showed you how to deal with limits in the more basic examples and the last of the basic examples. So, you know, you're not totally unfamiliar. But yeah, um, our first concern is the integrand, what I just circled. And let's look at it and figure out what you should be. I think you should be the natural log of x. And um, that passes the test of both our first rule of thumb and our second rule of thumb. Our first rule of thumb said that if we pick u to be ln of x, that the derivative 1 over x should be inside of our integral. Well, it is. If I write a 1 right there, that's 1 over x right there. Cool. Our second rule of thumb said that if we have a composition of functions of the form f of g of x inside of our integral, then we should make u g of x. Well, we do have a composition, root ln of x. I circled too much. Root ln of x right there. And clearly, g of x is ln of x. So, uh, using both of the rule of thumbs that we've learned, uh, we see that this is a good choice. Now, um, on to business as usual. So, du is going to be 1 over x dx. And we need a replacement for dx. So, we need to solve for dx using this equation. That just requires that we multiply by x on both sides, right? And doing that, we see that x times du is equal to dx. Cool. So now uh, we're going to rewrite our integral and for a second I'm not going to write the limits of integration. Um, that's because we haven't translated them to be about u. Uh, they're still about x. And so um, first dx is x du. So I'm going to write in place of dx x du. And of course I won't bother writing that one there. And then I have divided by um, I have that divided by um, x times, and then it's going to be square root of, uh, ln of x is u, square root of u. Got it. Now, this happens. These two x's take care of each other. So what we have is really uh, integral um, du over root u, but root u can be written as u to the one half, so I could do that. And I could um, do a little bit better to use the power rule if I wrote integral u to the negative one half uh, times du. Got it. Now I know how to go from here. It's using the power rule which says that integral um, a, my bad, ax to the n dx is going to be, uh, it's going to be ax to the n plus one divided by n plus one plus c. So that's the power rule where a is clearly one here. So, um, and x is clearly u. So if we apply the power rule, we can write u to the 1 half divided by 1 half uh, plus c is our solution. But uh, since we have limits of integration, we're not gonna write plus c. We'll just write this evaluated at the two values of u. Now, the two values of u are not e and e to the fourth because u is equal to ln of x. So uh, this one is going to be u equals ln of e, and ln of e is one. And then the upper limit is going to be u is equal to ln of e to the fourth, which is equal to four. Remember, ln of x is equal to log base e of x, yeah? And that's why ln of e is one, and ln of e to the fourth is four. So our limits of integration are going to be 1 and 4 instead of e and e to the 4th. But then we could also take care of dividing by 1 half. It's the same as multiplying by 2. So we write 2 root um, u evaluated at 1 and 4. Now notice that because I have translated these limits from x to u, I don't need to go back to x. I could just evaluate exactly where I'm at. So I have 2 root 4 minus to root one, which is going to be uh, two times two, because root four is two, minus two, that's four minus two. So lots of twos. Uh, the final answer, uh, oh, sorry. It's gonna be four minus two, which is going to be two. Yeah? Cool, so the answer to this integral, which is a definite integral, and therefore a number, is equal to two. And that number is just saying the area under the function one over x times square root of ln of x from x equals e to x equals e to the fourth 
is two. Yeah, take care.